Then there's something known as resolving power, otherwise also known as resolution, the resolution of the image. You probably heard this term also in when it comes to regular digital cameras, collecting power and resolution of the camera. Resolution means how clear the image, crystal clear it is. You know, you don't want it to be fuzzy and you don't want it to be, you know, very uh, distorted. So resolving power, this is a measure of how clear the image will be, okay? So resolving power, uh, the resolving power is proportional to aperture over wavelength. So the way that this works, resolving power is proportional to aperture over what wavelength you are observing, what wavelength you are looking at. So does making the aperture bigger help the resolution? as well as the brightness, oh yeah. So if you double the aperture, the clarity of the picture doubles. If you triple the aperture, the clarity triples. So basically this one doesn't have a square. It's just a single power. If you double this, this one doubles. Triple this, tri this one triples. Quadruple, quadruple. You don't have to square anything, okay? But it also depends on the wavelength that you are uh, trying to view. The smaller the wavelength that you are viewing, the better is the resolving power. The smaller this is, the better resolving power. Okay, between the... In the visible spectrum, which one has the smallest wavelength? Violet, red. Right? Red as the largest. So which one can you see better? A violet picture? Can you see it better? Or a red picture? Violet. Right? Smaller wavelength, you can see a resolution better. I purposefully made this slide <laughs> red. As you can tell, you can barely see it. Well, I, it's also dark, which also makes it kind of hard to see. But red gives you a little fuzzier. Okay, blue, and of course, if it's brighter, it also helps, but blue and green and yellow makes it a little sharper. So if you have a star that's red and a star that's blue, which one will you be able to see more clearer? The blue star. Okay, so we'll continue from there Wednesday. Okay, last time we left off, we left off, we were talking about resolving power, and now we can expand this outside of the visible spectrum. So let's go outside. Let's go ultraviolet, X-ray, gamma ray. And let's go this way, infrared, radio. Infrared radio. So as you go this way, the wavelength keeps getting larger. Keeps getting larger, larger, larger. As you go this way, the wavelength keeps getting smaller, smaller, smaller. Okay, so if we now expand beyond that, we can say you can see gamma ray uh, much, much clearer. Of course, you won't be able to see it with your naked eye because it's not visible. But if you have a telescope that views in the gamma ray, since the wavelength is so small, so small, so small, that gives you the best resolution out of them all, okay? And then next best resolution, X-ray then the next best resolution, ultraviolet, and then it keeps getting poorer. When you get to infrared, and then your radio wave, radio wave is the largest one. So, see it says X-rays and gamma rays have small wavelengths, then X-ray telescopes have great resolving power. But radio telescopes have poor resolution because radio waves are the largest. So, <clears throat> and then the next thing it says, in the visible, since violet and blue have the smallest wavelengths, they can be resolved better than red. So that's exactly what we had said. So does that mean we can conclude, let's no longer use radio waves. Uh, let's no longer use radio telescopes if they have poor resolution. The answer is no, you still wanna do, ra you still wanna utilize radio telescope because remember we learned that cool objects in the sky mainly radio, uh, radiate in the radio spectrum. So. We do need radio telescopes. It's not like they're useless or whatever. So 
how would you be able to cure this problem if you had to do it? Let's say if you have a big number on the bottom over here, let's say you have a 100, 100 meter <coughs> because the typical wavelength of a, let's say an AM wave is about 100 meter, 200 meter, 300 meter. They're really, really huge waves. So if you wanted to make this number not so small, you had a huge number on the bottom, what would you have to do on the, on the top? Make the number of the top big or make the number of the top small? Because you want the ratio of two numbers to not be small. If the denominator is very big, what should you do to the numerator? It's a math question. <laughs> you should also make the numerator big. Right? Big, 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 big. For example, if I make a radio telescope that is 300 meters big, I mean, that's really, really big, then 300 over 100 is 3. So the resolving power is proportional to the number 3, you see? That's why the telescope I showed you, Arecibo Puerto Rico, Remember I said the uh, SETI project utilizes uh, a little telescope on top of that one? That's 300 meters big. That's the biggest radio telescope in the world, you see? Uh, not all radio telescopes are going to be that big, but they're still going to be big. Generally, they're about 30 meters big or 50 meters big. Uh, if you drive out towards uh, Vegas in Barstow, there's a radio telescope there too. You can see it and you can even visit them. And probably theirs is about, about 30, 40 meters big too. Um, in the past, one of my students did it, one of their extra credits there. They made an appointment there and you go, uh, you go there and I think they might even take you up to the telescope and walk inside of the radio telescope. And then they did a report on that. So. So if you can do something like that in a semester, that's a really good uh, extra credit. <coughs> so that's basically what I'm trying to say is we can cure the problem of big wavelength by making the aperture big, and that's why radio telescopes are generally big, okay? You're usually not going to find a radio telescope that's very, very small like that. So if there is a red binary star system, so coming back to the issue of red versus blue. If there is a two red stars, binary stars, it's harder to tell them apart than a blue binary star system. And that's interesting. So if you have two red stars that are right next to each other in the sky, it's going to be harder for you to tell that there are actually two red stars versus if they were two blue stars. Why? Because the reds will look fuzzier. They will, they will not look as clear. So that's one effect of the fact that you can see blue better than you can see red, okay? Now going on to the next um, power of a telescope, 